A lot of people dream of quitting the rat race, living a simple life, or to coin the modern terminology today, a minimalist life, and living in a small space such as a caravan, a motorhome, a canal boat, or simply downsizing to a smaller flat or studio apartment. I have been full-time touring in my Airstream for many years, and I was in caravans before that, so I thought I'd give you a tour of my Airstream and show you that to live simply, to live this minimalist lifestyle, by no means does that mean going without and by no means does that mean roughing it. Right now it's November, so we're in the winter and I would say when you're full-time touring in the winter, two things are pretty essential. One is a hard standing pitch, so you're not dragging mud into your caravan or motorhome the whole time. The second is a mains electric hookup. I find that very useful in the winter. In the summer I go off grid and I've made a video about going off grid in my Airstream. I'll put a card up here and I'll put a link in the description below. But right now I'll take you inside and show you around my Airstream. So this is a European Airstream 532. Sadly not made anymore but the good news is, is that all the major UK manufacturers, Swift, Bailey, Eldis, Luna and Coachman, they all make this layout. It's called the classic two berth end washroom layout. And the main advantage of this layout is the fact you have everything from a huge lounge, kitchen and a big washroom at the end in a fairly compact body shell, which means you don't need such a large tow vehicle and you can go more places with it. Of course, the downsides are you only have the one living zone, which might be an issue if there's a couple and one of you wants to sleep, one of you doesn't. And of course, the second payback for that freedom is the fact that you need to make up your bed every night from the lounge. You can either have two singles or a double. I make up the double every night. People say to me, do you not get fed up with making the bed every night? Sometimes I do, but you know what? Every evening I have to go through a ritual of taking the dog to the dog walk, cleaning my teeth, changing into my jammies, an extra five minutes to make up the bed. It doesn't make a huge difference. And the advantage of having all this extra space and the maneuverability and towability of a smaller caravan to me far outweighs the disadvantage of making up the bed. So staying with the lounge area, I'm going to show you what's under this seat, which will be of huge reassurance to those of you who are worried that it might be a little bit cold in the winter. Well, look at this. <laughs> the central heating and hot water boiler. It's a system called Alder from Sweden and it runs just like a domestic central heating system with a boiler, there's a hot water tank in here and then we have radiators all the way around the trailer with a lovely, soft, gentle, silent heat that permeates the entire fabric of the caravan. It runs off mains electricity, we're plugged in at the moment, and it runs off bottled gas. Okay, so staying at the front of the trailer, now just show you some of the places that I put things. So you have a drawer unit here, that's underwear, you don't need to see in there. This drawer is technology, cables, hard drives, and as a little tip, I've started putting all the leads and stuff in these little freezer bags, which just makes finding them a lot easier. This is the shoe and boot cupboard. Under the seats, as you may have noticed, we have the bedding. As we get to the higher level, many of you who caravan will already know that you should only put lighter items in the upper lockers for towing stability and if you store things there permanently, it just means you don't have to keep faffing around and repacking when you sit on the road. <clears throat> so this is Tupperwares, food containers, um, plastic bottles. This one is t-shirts and jumpers. Should put the light on really, shouldn't I? And then this one here, I've got saucepans, two saucepans and a milk saucepan in this one. 
And these I love because these were originally my parents. These are 50 years old and they're still going strong. And a milk pan. And then on the other side, I've got my tea, spare tea, coffee and snacks like my prunes and my nuts. Health, health, health. Right, so turning our attention now to the central unit. Here in the middle is where I keep my tablet, my phone. I need to tidy that bit up actually. Kitchen towel, dog biscuits. Now along the top I have the fruit basket, clothes pegs and dog biscuits. Here is the table. So the table comes out of there. cutlery drawer and I just have six of everything really and a very minimal number of utensils. This is Dougal's drawer, all Dougal's bits and pieces from towels to balls to combs. Rubbish and recycling, not very interesting but we've all got to do it. Then this is where I keep my little handheld vacuum cleaner, a few books, hats and gloves, a first aid kit, pens and garlic. The general everything drawer, matches, spirit level, torch, that kind of thing. And then finally in here is my blender and large frying pan and a few food items. Everybody asks what this cupboard is. It's really boring. It's just the extendable aerial if you watch TV. Which I don't. Up here, fab little stereo here. And then this side of the cupboard I've got herbal teas, um, insulated mugs, four small glasses, four of those and four large glasses and four little dessert pots and a couple of little bits and pieces that's all I need. I love these glasses especially these small ones they are wine glasses they are whiskey tumblers uh, juice glasses you don't need a huge array of stuff if you can get stuff that is multi-purpose all the better and then on this side, four bowls. Also got a couple of these larger bowls suitable for pasta. Unbreakable cafetiere. Favourite mugs, especially my favourite mug there, Calmac, love it. Four small melamine plates four large melamine plates and finally my chopping board and my cheese grater. Next to the kettle, spices, tea mugs, teapot and tea. And when you're on the road you just need to do that. Next to the fridge, in here we have oils, pasta, my water jug and breakfast cereal. Bits and pieces, potatoes, cocoa, peanut butter and finally colander, sieve. This is brilliant. Steamer. So you can boil potatoes and steam vegetables at the same time. Spiralizer which I've just bought, which is brilliant. A potato ricer for making mash without lumps. And then a larger teapot for when we have guests. If you'll excuse me before we go to the bathroom, just need to get lunch finally on the go because I'm starving.
Cheers. Right, before I show you around the bathroom, I've just come outside to talk about the car. The car makes an ideal place to store items that are not sensitive to the heat and the cold and you're not going to need very often. So for example, spare paper towels, dog food, things like that. They can go in the car. Right, and finally into the bathroom. Where I have my wardrobe. And in my wardrobe, obviously, clothes, a box to put my Wellington boots, and the rucksack in which Dougal travels on the motorbike. A nice area here for toiletries. Sink, under the sink. Normally that's for my second lot of bedding but it's empty at the moment because the bedding's in the wash and then cleaning stuff below. In this recess over the toilet, just cleaning stuff, laundry liquid, things like that. Somewhere to hang the motorbike helmet. Behind the toilet is a laundry bin. And then finally the shower compartment, which during the winter kind of doubles as a storage area where I keep my rucksacks with my computer, camera gear and stuff like that. In the summer you can put it in the car but in the winter because it's sensitive to the cold and you want to have it fairly close to hand I keep it there. It's not ideal but I can't really think of anywhere else to put my computer equipment just now. That brings us to the end of the tour of my Airstream, hopefully showing you that living simply does not mean going without, and it certainly doesn't mean roughing it. I will admit now that I have a corner of my mum's garage where I keep some of my stuff. So at the moment, my kite surfing kit, my generator, my deck chair for the summer, they're all in my mum's garage because I'm not using them at the moment. Some people might say that's cheating, but where are the rules? How can I be cheating if there are no rules? You make up your own rules, you set your own parameters. I hope to be making some more of these videos about how to live simply at the rate of about one a week for the next few weeks, months, years, alongside my regular videos, my vlogs and things that people have been enjoying so far. If you have any questions, any subjects you'd like me to cover about living simply, not necessarily caravan related, then please leave them in the comments below. Not the dog, in the comments on, under where you're looking. If you've enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't, then don't bother. And obviously I'd be very grateful if you want to see more, if you would hit that subscribe button, that would be super. So it just leaves me to say, Thanks for tuning in.